Oh, what a lad. Well, today I'm joined by one of the toughest players in the game. The Tongan-born loose forward has an inspiring story moving from Tonga to chase his rugby dream, and he made an instant impact finishing his school rugby as the best New Zealand rugby player at schools with winning the golden boot. He also had a brief stint with Auckland and the Blues after school before moving down to the Tasman Marco and the Crusaders where he's had a very successful run of winning titles. He's also been a very key member of the Tongan international side who will head to the Rugby World Cup this year and of course he is an absolute lad. He's one of the greats. He is the Tongan Axioni Havili. Welcome brother. Thank you. Thanks for um, having me Jimmy Ma. Mate, good to have you on. I've spoken to you over the last few end of season do's and you've always said you're willing to come on, so um great that you can finally get you on. Yep. I'm looking forward to um, you know, tell my story and been wanting to do this mm. the last couple of years and um now we um I'm here now. So. Yeah. Now I'm proud of you for even um stepping out and being willing to come on because I know it's not comfortable, especially for um, Tongans and I, I, if all most of the Tongan guys I asked to come on, they're all like, shit, no, no way I'm coming on here <laughs> trying to talk to you. But um, no, proud of you for even coming here and, um, you know, being willing to share your story. Thank you. Because, yeah, you're, you're, you've got a good one and I know you're going to inspire a lot of people from it. So let's start there. Obviously the last few um, few days – just won another Super Rugby title. Um, that's probably why our voices are both both still a bit husky. But you've had a massive run of titles since you've been here. Um, what was the what was the latest one like? What's the feeling like? I think the the last one on Saturday was probably the hardest um, final I've been involved. True. Um, in terms of we played we played the Chiefs at their home ground. Um, we had so many injuries this year. I wasn't even supposed to play, but because we had a few injuries, um, yeah, Razor gave me the um, you know, the opportunity to start at six, and um, yeah, I reckon last week was probably the hardest final I've been involved. Um, wow, that's crazy! And could you say you weren't you were given opportunity every time you've had an opportunity to wear the Crusaders jersey, man? You've always delivered every time. Yeah, um, yeah. Every time I put on the jersey, um, I love it. Um, mm. I wanted to um, give it everything because this team meant a lot. Um, mm. Came down here looking for opportunity, and this team it gave me that uh, not only to play, but it provided me the opportunity to go play for my country too. So. Every time, every time I put on this jersey, I um, always wanted to, um, you know, give back and give everything for this um, this club. Mm, well, you certainly did that, and even in the celebrations, how was that for you? You're always one of those guys who, right out the front in the celebrations, always the last one to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm not the, the last one to <laughs> go to sleep, but um, no, nah, I do love, um, you know, I do love a beer after after you win something, you know. Um, all the hard work you um you did throughout the year, and then you know to come out at the end of the season with the trophy. Um, yeah, <laughs> I always look forward to for, you know the celebration after the finals. Yeah, so. the crazy thing is that's that's all you really know at Super Rugby level. You've won it every single year you've been a part of this team. Man, yeah, it's crazy, man. Um, started I started in this I came to um Crusaders twenty twenty and. To finish my my time here with a trophy and um yeah it's crazy man I've never thought of um I play Super Rugby or play for this team and yeah to finish my time here with another trophy is yeah unreal mm, and your body's feeling good you got through the season injury free yeah uh, one of one of the few <laughs> that's the first time um the first time I you know finished the season with no injuries yeah. um. Hopefully, I can you know stay like that um, for the rest of the year. So, yeah, because obviously you got a big rugby world cup campaign to start on. So, w- what's that look like for you? When do you when do you head away? Um, the camp start on the fifth. Um, will be next week. So, yeah, have to fly out to Tonga um, um, on the fourth and get ready for um, you know the world cup. Mm. We've got a few games. Um, 
I think we'll play, yeah, we'll, our first game will be Australia. Oh, Australian yeah. A at home. And then we'll play Samoa, Fiji, Japan, and then Canada twice before we um, go to World Cup. Right, nice build up. So what are you um what are you expecting from the, the Tongans? Obviously you've got a very strong side on paper. Eh? A lot of quarter league players have come back or uh, made themselves available for Tonga now. So pretty good squad on paper. What are you expecting at the World Cup? Yeah, we got we got a um we got a good team. Mm. Um we just need to uh we just need to play together. Um we've got a few games leading to the World Cup, hopefully, um you know, all those games will, you know, help us, you know, bring a lot of confidence leading to the World Cup and hopefully we, you know, beat those, uh, you know, those big names. And yeah. We'll be here. Mate, well, you guys will definitely be a good chance. First time for a World Cup to you, for you as well, eh? So, yeah. Um, looking forward to it? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, yeah, I can't wait to be part of it. It'll be, you know, it'll be cool. Yeah. Go to World Cup and hopefully... Um, Play play a couple games in that um, tournament. So. Hey, I think you're going to be a massive part of Tong, the Tongan side and a key part to how successful they are. So <laughs> um, on the biggest stage too, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Can't Excited wait. for you. Yeah, everyone get to see the Tongan acts and action. No <laughs> doubt there'll be a few highlights yeah. at least. <laughs> but I'm keen to hear more about your story. Obviously, um, how the Tongans are. I guess, uh, brought up over there and um, your journey to moving to New Zealand to pursue your rugby career. Um, it's probably the big thing I'm really keen to hear about um, from you on this one. So um, give it give us it to it, give it to us from the start in terms of growing up in um, Tonga. How was it for you when, I guess, when you are first born? Yeah, I um, come from a family of four. Yeah. Um, my dad, mum and my older brother, there's only two of us. Um, we don't have a sister, um, but yeah, growing up in Tonga was it wasn't easy, but we um, we had a good we had a you know um, comfortable or how do I say like just a happy you know mm. normal life back home and um, all we yeah as a young kid growing up uh, all we all all we wanted to do is you know play rugby. Um, Every every kid at home dreamed to be you know play rugby somewhere else or because that's the only thing that we knew as a young kids growing up it's rugby that's mm. the only sport that we play back home and um yeah where do I start um yeah I'll, I'll start with the you know when um we came over to New Zealand and, um I can't remember what year was it. 2013, mm. one of the uh, Tongan under 14, um, we play, you know, play all, most of the big, uh, big name high school in Auckland, and then our first game was against Auckland Grammar, and straight after that, um, I was lucky enough to, uh, you know, get a scholarship to um, move to New Zealand the following year. True. Sure. Um, yeah, mo- moving to New Zealand was tough. Um, Knowing that I had to leave my family, mum and dad at home, and mm. so I moved here, moving to moving to a fam like family in Auckland, stay with them for a couple of years, and then my last year of school, um, I was lucky enough to get another scholarship to the hostel. Um, I think my last year at school, um, with that scholarship to move into the hostel, it kind of help me or make me just to focus on rugby because mm. knowing the reason why I'm here is for rugby um, yeah on my last year I just you know, f- focused on playing well and and I was lucky enough to you know sign off Auckland my first two, two years out of school mm. is, is it your parents who raised you your birth parents who raised you or what's the yeah. story there so Havili is my birth um my real last name. Oh, okay. Um, but I got adopted to um, my real dad's first cousin. Oh, true. So it's, it's normal. It's normal yeah. back home. So that's why I only got one brother. Oh, okay. Um, but in my real family, there's eight of us siblings. Oh, really? And I'm the youngest of eight. Um, so I got. That's why I got adopted to the um, my dad's first cousin. 
Uh, and that's why the, uh, the Talitu is oh, my last yeah. name now. Yeah. Um, I've all, yeah, I decided to change my, you know, my last name to my adopted family. Mm. Um, uh, as, as a growing up, it was tough, you know. Um, having to leave a family that I don't have their last name. Mm. Um, then I, yeah, once I, you know, met in rugby, I decided to honor honor my fam my top the family you know if it wasn't for them i reckon um, i wouldn't be here like in new zealand now uh, yeah when did you realize that you were you had been adopted or like what age did you realize what had what had happened and have you, did you do you still speak to your uh, or original parents yeah yeah close every oh, time close. like twice probably twice a week oh, okay yeah um but my adopted family um they they told me as soon as I start speaking, mm. um, they started to explain I was adopted, mm. and they always take me to my um adopted um my real dad's oh, mom okay. to meet my siblings. Yeah, so I was going. You know, sometimes I'll go to sleep at my um, real parents. Sometimes I st- they, you know stay yeah. at my um, but my adopted family never like they never stopped me from you know going to see loving my my real family mm. you know. And I find it tough now. Um, it's probably most uh, most most islanders out there um, are the same as me, like, you know. And like, <coughs> I'm making, no, I'm making making money in rugby now, but I still have to share, you know, my income with my real family and my adopted family at the moment, mm. like you know. And I'm I'm sure that there's peop- a lot of people out there are, you know, the same. Mm. Um, but here, yeah, like my adopted family, that they never let uh, stop me from you know loving my real parents. And the, the only th- that's, that's why I changed my last name. Didn't want to move the Havili out of my, yeah. you know, my name. I wanted to just you know move Havili to my middle name and then add my um. I top the family's last name to my name now. Just a way to, you know, honor them mm. for what they have done for me over the years. And mm. yeah, that's mum and dad's. Uh, my ro- my mum and dad's now, you know, they're happy they've seen their last name on TV. Mm. So that's that's so cool. So obviously, it's part of the culture, but what is the reason to adopt the youngest? Is it a financial thing to give the others a Better upbringing, or in our culture, um, um, when you get adopted, it's the reason why maybe their family don't have a sister, or oh, okay. maybe they don't have a brother. Maybe they all the kids are all you know, yeah, all boys, and they needed a sister, or yeah. maybe they're all girls and they needed a um a brother. Oh, true. Um, but because my my adopted um, family, they only have one son, mm. and they needed, a, um, they needed a brother, so that's why they adopted me. True. Yeah. That's cool. And then did you two play rugby constantly in the backyard, or where did your love from rugby for rugby come from? My, my love from rugby, because my old man, my real dad used to play for Tonga. Oh, true. Oh, he yeah. used to play for Tonga, and I think that's where... Uh, my love for rugby started um, when I found out that my old man used to play. Um, as a young kid, um, y- young kid growing up back home, that's all we knew is rugby, mm. and the rugby field in our village is not far, probably fifty meters away from my house, and I go there every day um, after school, you know, play rugby, you know. With all the you know the neighbors and um, mm. all the kids in our village, and now like all the older the the boy the all the the boys they used to the way older than me mm. they used to play rug um rug before my village. Now they all have kids and um, wife. They don't play rugby anymore, but they they remember me as a young little you know young mm. kid running around. Always wanted to you know. Always wanted to be involved in like the older boys stuff, yeah. you know, chopping them. Yeah, <laughs> um, 
Man, I was a yeah, I was a uh, I was a naughty boy Were growing you? up. Yeah. Bad. What sort of trouble did you get into? Drinking. Oh yeah. What age? Uh, man, no, we like nine, ten. Far out. Yeah, but what? I wasn't like a heavy drinker. I was just like at nine. Yeah, because <laughs> I always follow around, like follow the older boys. Oh yeah. And they always like, because I was a little kid, like naughty kid. Yeah. Um, always want to like do what the older boys, you know. Mm. And yeah, that's how like, yeah, I started drinking when I was a young kid. Um, what sort of stuff were you drinking? Beers or like spirits? Beer, yeah, oh, beer. Yeah. But I, I, like, I would never finish like a whole bottle. I was just like, yeah, a little sip. Oh yeah. Um, smoking, like all that kind of stuff True. as a young kid. Um, that's why when I look back now, um, man. All the um all the stuff that I did when I like a younger boy, like you know. Mm. Um Yeah. Well and when you went over to New Zealand, was it the same? Were you still Nah, when I came over to New Zealand I didn't drink. Yeah. Um I did that as a before I started in high school. Oh, okay. And then when I started in high school I wasn't like doing any of that kind of stuff. I was focusing on rugby. True. What changed? What what made you change there? Was it a, just a mindset? Switch or how do you how do you go away from the bad stuff into sort of the rugby path? I think look back now. I think I think there's a reason why I did it as a young kid. Mm. Now I don't do it like you know. But imagine I've I've, I've known people back home. They were like, you know, no drinking, no smoking. They didn't do any that, any of that kind of stuff as a young kid. Mm. Now they're doing it. Um, mm. As they get older, but I look back now, like I did that. Got it out of your system. Yeah, <laughs> I have to went through that now. As a young kid, now I'm like, you know, yeah, I don't do that kind of stuff. Um, I still drink and stuff. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But that's fascinating. Yeah. And I'm keen to hear about like your move from Tonga to New Zealand. Like how how hard was that for you? Did you speak any English, or yeah. um, how scary was it for you to move from Tonga to um, New Zealand by yourself. I was, I can talk about um, my high school eh? mm. back home. I went to a school called um, Tupou College. Uh, it's a boarding school. Everyone had to board, um, you know, stay oh, in really? school. So you, schools, the school started on Sunday, so everyone had to be back. Um, no, not Sunday. Uh, Saturday afternoon. Oh, school so starts yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. Start on Saturday. So you go to school on Saturday. Um, and then on a Friday, you can go home. But once, so you, but your um, mum and dad will come and see you Sunday. They will bring the best food on a Sunday. Oh, yeah. And they will come and see you again on Wednesday. But I think that school, because um, at that school, you, you go to sleep on time. You don't eat food and not, you know, you don't get full all the time. You don't eat enough food. You train hard. You go to the farm every day. True. <laughs> yeah, tough. It's, I try to explain it to, you know, people here in New Zealand, yeah. like what's the life in their schools like. And it's probably the hardest, um, yeah, the hardest, hardest thing I've done, like, really? look back now, like, all right. So when you say school, you're not actually in a classroom. You're no, you go you go to school during the day. Oh yeah, but it's like how we have our calendar here. Yeah, it's like everything's time. Um, you wake up at six six thirty five every morning, shower, make your bed. You you, you, you um you pray every morning. Every everything you do, it start with a pray. Mm. Um, go to school, lunch. Go back to school. Um, go to the farm, and then come home. Or after when you finish on the farm, training start. Oh, okay. And then sometime like um, you miss the, the dinner, and you end up when you end up not eating anything <laughs> after you train so hard in the afternoon. Um, and then you, you do that every single day. True. And then on a Friday. Um, that's when you like you know look forward to go home. Um, go to like go to town. Yeah, 
you know, sometimes, you know, you, it, if you do have a girlfriend, <laughs> um, you go meet up you with You would them. have always. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> I, didn't have a, nah, I didn't have a girlfriend when I was, you know, in high school back home. But, yeah, so you, my, from Sun Saturday to the Friday. So Fridays, you always look forward to, you know. Yeah. Go home and you... Because you take all those clothes, and, you know, everything... But there's only one uniform mm. that you save for that day. You save that one uniform that's all brand new just to wear it to go to <laughs> town, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, no wonder you were keen to get to um, a New Zealand school just to get out of um, that, obviously, if it's the toughest few years of your life. Yeah. Um, moving here to New Zealand was probably the hardest, yeah, not so. It was hard as it was hard in terms of like English. Yeah, different way. Yeah, different way. I remember my first day. Um, my first day at grandma. Um, and because I couldn't like you know I couldn't speak English at all. Nothing. Nothing. Um, the only word I <laughs> I knew back then it was like mother, father. Oh yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> I remember, uh, yeah, my first day, um, you know, um, I s my first day at grandma, like, because I couldn't, you know, couldn't talk and yeah. stuff. Um, one of the teach, uh, the one of the teacher there, um, she she kind of understand, you know, she kind of understand like w what I'm going through, and mm. she decided to put me in the um easel easel oh, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I spend. Two years, just study English. Yeah, didn't yeah. do any other st like other um, class. Just focus on learning English. Yeah, and I was lucky enough. Um, the people that I hang out with, uh, it's all Balangi boys. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, even now they're still my like best mate. Um, every time I go out to Auckland, we always hang out and sure. stuff. Yeah, but those guys, man, I'm so grateful for them. You know, because. Mm. They never laugh, you know. They never, um, they never make fun of, you know, make a make fun of or mock me mm. if you know if if I don't get the word right or yeah. if, you know. But they always like the way they talk to me was real slow. Um, sometimes they try to collect, uh, correct my English sometimes. Mm. Um, but yeah, English is probably the hard. Yeah, it made it so yeah so hard because mm. back home. I started to realise when I came here, man, I sort of just focused on, like, learning English back home. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I um, skipped school. I never, like, because school, the school I went back home was, like, my mindset was, just, you know, rugby. I want to, yeah. you know, want to go overseas and play rugby and didn't really, uh, didn't really, like, focus in, in school. I was just, like, rugby, 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 and then, until I came over and I was like, man, I wish I, you know, <laughs> focus in, you know, and like study English back home. Yeah. But well, that's cool that your, um, obviously your supportive network um, when you moved definitely helped you because I could imagine how easy it is to be picked on or bullied. But also imagine not many people would be too keen to bully you either. I could imagine you being a bit <laughs> of a scrapper. Were you, a, were you a fighter at school? Or no, nah, not a fighter at Always all, tough. Man. Um I was as a when I was little, I, um, like I said before, mm. I was naughty. I was like yeah. I always wanted to fight. Oh yeah. Um, but as I got, you know, got a little bit older, like I was like, nah, that's not me. Mm. Um, but yeah, at school, like I didn't. To be honest, like I didn't get poorly at all. Like the only time I felt like I was getting poorly was people like start laughing at like you know in my English mm. and. That's the only time I felt like um, I got bullied, like in school. Mm. But, yeah, no one really like you know tried to bully me mm. face to face. <laughs> um, Too scary, man. <laughs> no, nah, I was just scary, like you know. I, I didn't didn't have time for that. Yeah. Uh, in high school. Another thing at high school, I guess, is everyone always respects the guys who are good at rugby as well, yeah. and I guess that's where you came in as well. You were. 
uh, absolute gun at schoolboy level and people obviously knew what a talent you were so they probably all wanted to be your friend <laughs> yeah um i yeah i had you know had few people like that in high school um but the people like the people that care and look after me in high school they're the people that um we're still you know we still you know talk to each other we're st- every time i go up to auckland or we play in auckland i was you know try to catch up with them or ask if they want to come to the game you know because mm. they were the the one that helped me and not in um before i met in rugby mm. um but yeah did you always know you were going to make it at rugby did you did you know you were going to be good enough I'll say yeah. Mm. Um, I just, I just believe, you know, I believe in myself. Um, I work so hard, you know. I work so hard. I had my, as a young kid, I had that dream of, you know, moving to New Zealand or, you know, somewhere around the world. And I, you know, I had that. I always, you know, work so hard and, yeah. Mm. And when you. Obviously, when you won the Golden Boot Award, um, being the best schoolboy player in New Zealand at the time, what sort of pressure did you feel from that, or was that sort of you realising that you were going to make a career out of it? Because on my last year at school, I signed with Auckland start of the year. Oh, really? Yeah, I start. I signed with Auckland Academy, or was that full Academy? Contract? I oh. signed Academy of oh. Auckland. Signed for two years. I started. I signed it way before the the season start of yeah. my last year. Oh yeah. So I already like knew that pathway was. Yeah, there. I, I already knew like you know, once I finish school, I'm gonna move into like you know professional mm. area and start you know. I was like yeah, but that's why like when I said I move into the hostel, sign with Auckland. So that my last year I was just like you know focus on like playing well and you know try to give back to the, you know the school. Um, the pressure that I had from from that golden boot. Um, now I don't have that anymore. Mm. Um, but my first two years out of school, like knowing that the guys that got that um, award are all all blacks, mm. and I had I put so much pressure on myself. Like, man, I need to be an all black. Um, I had the, I had the, I had the dream to be an all black. But like the pressure of like receiving that award, and yeah, it was so much. Like it was actually too much, yeah. you know, too much pressure for me. Knowing that like Adi Savi, it was you know he got their award and a few other you know big name. Yeah, but yeah, and that's interesting, eh? That you felt all that pressure because you'd won that award yeah, and that's almost that's held you back more than, than rather than gave you confidence that you were good enough. Yeah, it's more more like from. The people outside, yeah, they're always like talking. Man, you you, you got the you got the golden boot, like Adi Sahabir got it, and like in my yeah. house, like man, I have to, you <laughs> know, I have to, you know, I have to make the All Blacks, cause yeah, you know, the, those guys, you know, got their awards as well. So, mm. and then how did you find your first few um, years? Oh, first year in the Auckland setup, going into that environment, tough. Mm. Yeah, it was tough because I can't remember. I think and with Auckland um, Academy, like if you have work, I didn't have a job, you know. Mm. And I was living off. How much I was living on? I was living off eight. Oh, I can't remember. I think it was eight grand. How long? For the whole year. A year. A year. Holy! I was living on um yeah eight grand. Bargain hunting. Yeah, that everywhere. was my my f- um my. F- yeah, that's my first contract with Auckland. True. I was living on an eight grand. Um, cause I got him work. Um, cause my visa back then I was only allowed. Um, I was only allowed to make. Um, make money through rugby. Oh yeah. So I wasn't allowed to like. Do another job. Do another job. Oh, yeah. But I was like um, a guy. You probably know him. His name, um, Ben Meyer. Mm-hmm. He was the Auckland. Um, Academy uh, manager back then. Oh yeah, and he helped me a lot, man. Um, so grateful. He, yeah, sometimes he'll find me job like cash mm. job. Um, 
some um sometime he would just give me the um the fuel fuel card. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, to go fill up my card because oh, he cool. knew that I um, couldn't, you know, couldn't yeah. work and but yeah, it was it was tough in the academy um and because if you work in the morning, if let's say you work at start at seven, mm. you have to be in like go into the gym, get your training done before yeah. you go to work. And then I was there, yeah, I did that. Because I wasn't working, I was like, just train, train, train. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, and then, did you get any opportunities to play? Yeah, I did. Because um, that year, we, um, we, my first year out of school, th- this one, the under-19 tournament. Oh, yeah, was yeah, still, yeah. Yeah. So, I was training for that under-19. Um, we, had a, we had a good team that year. Um yeah, we should, yeah we did yeah because we we won it that year. Um, but yeah, that year like I was, I think the Auckland Mighty back then wasn't going that well. Mm. Like it didn't win that much, uh, many games, and they had a few injuries. Um, before the under nineteen tournament. Um, yeah, they yeah they asked me if it, they game they said that um they're gonna name me to play, so I debut against um Waikato. At Eden Park. How were the nerves before that? <sighs> scary, man. Was it? Yeah. yeah. It was scary. But I remember uh, Jerome Kaino said to me... You're playing with Jerome? Yeah. Oh, I, right. I played with him. He just said to me... He um, won the golden boot too, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, I remember cause I, I remember before the game, I just said to him, man, do you ever feel nervous um, before a game? And yeah. he said, yeah, it's still... Every time, every time. Sure. But he just said to me, like, um, "Just go, you know. Once you get, get out there, and whatever action you do, first action you do, make sure you like, you know, that's how you set up your game." Mm. And I still remember, even now, like, that's my, that's how I like. If I'm starting or coming off the bench, whatever, like, you know, whatever action I, whatever. The first thing I would do there mm. was make sure that this this is how I set up my, you know, this, the rest of the game. Yeah, I can um, see it. It's usually a hard axe tackle <laughs> right around someone's uh, knees. I was, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh. Oh, that's cool that you're playing with Jerome and uh, yeah. that Auckland side. Oh, man, I, I said to him one time, um, I think, it was, yeah, do you know do you do? Um, we were on the post. I said to him, man. I used to watch you um, back home. I was still in primary, <laughs> 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 and now I'm I'm playing with you. Yeah, but he was start. He was just start laughing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy. Um, it's crazy. It happens. At how fast it happens, and <laughs> you'll see it now. Eh? Some kids, some of these guys coming through, like your son Noah Hotham. He was probably at primary when you yeah, watching I was me. Playing, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how did the move to um, Tasman come about? Why did you leave Auckland? So my f- like my first out of school debut for Auckland. Mm. Um went into play the under nineteen. I got the uh, um the the player play of the tournament that for the nineteen under nineteen again. Oh, even more pressure. I wasn't yeah. Um then I went from academy contract to a full contract sign with Auckland for another two years. Sure. After the under nineteen tournament. Yeah. And then in 2018, I was um, a sign of uh, Blues as a injuries cover. Mm. Um, I think back then, because I wasn't, I didn't have the, I wasn't allowed to play in New Zealand under 20s. I went did all the like, the the camp oh, with the under 20s, yeah. oh, but yeah. I wasn't allowed to play. You played New Zealand school, so yeah, I played yeah, New yeah, Zealand yeah. school. Um, so I got uh, injuries cover with the Blues in 2018. Yeah, when it. Yeah, Train with them all year, and then I um, debuted for them in 2018. And I was like, "Man, I'm actually, you know, going good here. Um, won the under 19, you know, going to a full contract now with Auckland. Now I'm debut for the Blues. Mm. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, have a good year." And then, man, after the Super Rugby season, I got, um, you know, the coaches back then for Auckland was. Are we allowed to say the name? Mm. Yeah, Philo and uh, Alama. Mm. Um, they call me in 
after you know after the Super Rugby season, mate, you need to come in and we need to talk to you. In my head, I was like, oh man, they're probably you know gonna tell me what uh, what they want me to do, and that the minor ten season. Yeah, and I walk into that room. I still remember. I walk into that room, them two sitting there, and myself, shut the door. And I was like, oh, yep. Yeah. And then the first question they asked me in their room was like, do you reckon you're, do you reckon you're ready to be, you know, you're good enough to be in the Super Rugby team? Mm. And I said to them, I'm like, oh, I said to them, I was like, oh, yep, yeah, I think I am. I just debuted for them and I've been training with the Blues. And yeah, they pretty much said, no, nah, they're not ready. <laughs> True. Yeah, they said, I'm not ready. Um, they, they, when the Blues asked them about me if got to do a pre, um, pre-season with them, they told them, nah, they told them not to take me. But the Blues still end up, um, gave me the contract. All oh, right. Um, and yeah, it was probably, yeah, that was the hardest talk Mm. Like face to face with like coaches I've been, like I've been to like you know. Mm. Remember, they pretty much told me that I wasn't good enough, mm. and they they said to me in in their room that I wasn't I wasn't gonna play my attend that year. And they yeah they explained it to me. Oh, we got you know, we got Hoskin, we got mm. uh, Akira, we got Blake Gibson. And I was like, okay, that's fair, fair enough. Like, you know, I understand, mm-hmm. like, those guys are super rugby. They're, you know, big, you know. Mm. And they said to me, like, you can stay here and play under 19, uh, play development, and then we c- we'll call you in. And I was like, uh, let me think about it, you know. Mm. So I left that room, rang my agent straight away, told him, man, Auckland just told me they're not going to name me. I'm full contract for two years. They're not going to name me. And I'm not staying here and wasting my time playing development. Mm. I want to play Super Rugby next year, but I'm not staying here <laughs> and playing development. And a um, couple of days after that, uh, Manuatu. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, Manuatu, were ke- the first one that came, they were keen as, and like, yeah. I was. I said yes to them because I just wanted to play. Yeah, you first, know? first one that came. Yeah, I yeah. just wanted to play. You might attend their year and... Yeah, no. The same. T- the same day, I said yes to Manu too. So they had all my flight, everything ready. Later that later that day, um, Leon called me. Oh yeah, yeah. Leon called me and he said to me like, "We're looking for loose forward, and we think that you are, um, you're the person that we're looking. We um, we want it." Mm. Uh, in my head, I had no idea. Don't I don't know anything about Tasman. Don't know Nelson. And uh, yeah, called my agent, and my agent said, "Yeah, you need to go there because they're, they're on the top four. Mm. Um, they're on the top four. Straight away, drove to Eden Park, went upstairs to the um, CEO room. Mm. You probably heard the story before. Yeah, yeah I, I told Shane and Goody about it. Oh yeah, went into the uh, CEO room and I said to him, um, I'm, go- I'm going to go to Tasman.'" And he said, nah, you're not going there. And I was in my head, I was like, why? So then he ended, he said no to Tasman, but I said yes to go to Manor too. Oh, true. Yeah. And I called my agent again. I was like, why is he like not letting me go to Tasman? And my agent said, yeah, because Tasman are top four. Yeah. And, and you know, they're on the top four and uh, he probably don't want you to go help them. Mm. Then, yeah, it took me, a, I think it took me like, a, it took me a week Auckland didn't want to release me. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, they, they didn't actually didn't want to <laughs> release me. And my agent was like, nah, jump on the, go on the plane, go to Nelson. Mm-hmm. I'll call Nelson Rugby. Um, so, yeah, went to Tasman. Yeah, went to Nelson. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, my agent, you know, finished all the paperwork and, yeah, got loaned out to Nelson, uh, <laughs> to Tasman That's in 2018. Crazy, yeah. 2018. That's, that's a crazy story. How were you feeling amongst all this? Were you, uh, was it stressful going through all of that? It, w- it was stressful. Mm. It was actually very stress- stressful. But the way I did it, uh, I didn't just, you know, just um, call them and say, yeah, I'm going to go. 
I actually went mm. to his office yeah. face to face and t- told him what I want yeah. to do. Um, but yeah, it look back now, like, and that was so like that was brave, like so brave of me to yeah. go straight to the um, the CEO and tell him that I want to go to Tasman. Yeah, good on you, um, mate. Yeah, <laughs> but the people, yeah, the most people there didn't. They didn't like it. Mm. Uh, they didn't like me going to Tasman. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, and when when they're telling you that um, you know you're not ready, all this stuff, um, how did that make you feel? Did it give you a sort of a chip on your shoulder to show them that, mate, I am ready, or that you sort of lose a bit of confidence from it? Nah, th- I was sad, or like I was, I was, I was sad, and yeah. I, I um, started thinking, like, man, am I good enough? Yeah. Um, because he said to me, like, you need to be a hundred and ten. You need to run like under five, you know, Bronco, mm. and all that kind of stuff. Like, I want my loose forward to be fast, break strong. Yeah, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff, you know. And that, you know, that, you know, that I still think about it now. Like, yeah. Um, that made that made me, you know, work work even harder. Like, you know, for what he's when he said I'm not good enough. Mm. And I was like, okay, I want to show you. Yeah. Um, and that's the mindset. You probably know that every time we play <laughs> Auckland, eh? Yeah. Um, Saw it in the semi a few yeah. weeks ago, mate. Wow. Auckland, like Auckland or the Blues, like, you know. Yeah. Not, I don't hate the Blues mm. or Auckland. Like, yeah. I just hate, I just didn't it's like. Got a the, chip, yeah. yeah. Didn't like what they said to me. Yeah. Because I grew up there thinking, yeah, I'm an Auckland boy. I'm gonna play the blue for the blues. I'm gonna play for Auckland. That's all, like you know, I wanted to do. Mm. But for yeah, for them to saying that wasn't good enough, not Auckland, you know. Yeah. But like the person they said I wasn't good enough, I wasn't ready. Yeah. That's why, like, Auckland, Auckland, the blues was yeah, every time we played them, it's my <laughs> favorite game of the year, like you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'll be regretting that now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so then you moved down to. Nelson, how how do you how do you feel down there? What do you think? Man, I remember my first day there. Everyone just made me. It was humble, very humble. Mm. Um, had to travel, um, drove from Nelson to Blenheim, my first <laughs> um, water squad training, <laughs> and then drove back. <laughs> so um, what, hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's it was very humble, but like <laughs> the people, people. Um, and Nelson or like people who, you know they work for Tasman and everyone who came up to me to say hi mm. they just made me f- um, they made me feel welcome my first day even Shane you know mm. um, Leon everyone was you know at Tasman just made me f- um, feel welcome my f- even my first day mm. and I was like man I'm not leaving <laughs> I'm staying here <laughs> uh, and you're a man of your word. You're still there. Still there. Um, and you obviously won a few competitions um, with Tasman as well. And I could imagine hearing you speak now that one against Auckland um, up there a few years ago would be right up there for you. I reckon, yeah, it would be right. I reckon it'll be. I'll say probably yeah. Favorite game. Favorite game ever. Uh, ever. Wow. Yeah. yeah favorite game ever. I'll say. Because that year, um, North Harbour beat us. You know, um, yeah. Walkman beat us. All That's the big, right. all the big city beat us that year. Um, man, somehow we managed to, you know, mm-hmm. made made into that final and to play them um, at Eden Park. The two coaches they said that I wasn't good enough. They were co- they were co- in that final. True. Um, yeah. <laughs> Even now, like man, I still, you know, <laughs> I can see it. I still think about it. Their final, yeah. Um, man, it was actually like, yeah. It was like a, like a relief. Like all of you know, everything was on my shoulder mm. to you know beat them at Eden Park. Those two coaches are still coaching that team. Mm. You know, 
Yeah. Good memories. And oh, even back to last year's Super Rugby final against the Blues, it must be another special one for you. It was pretty special. I wasn't wasn't playing. Oh, I didn't play, true, but it was right. pretty, you know, special. Like yeah. to play them, you know, in yeah. the park in front of their people. And they, I think that's the first time or second time we would play a final away, and then yeah. we won. Yeah, no, they were, yeah, it was pretty special. So, how did you get your crusade opportunity? Was it just from playing well in Tasman? Someone like a goodie yeah. or someone just knew how good you were and tried to get you down? Yeah. Um. So. Came to Nelson on loan, twenty eighteen. I was talking to the Blues at the time. Um, in twenty eighteen. They were saying, "Yeah, well, um, we're keen to sign you and stuff." And then, I got injured. Uh, in twenty eighteen, in Nelson. Mm. Um, it was the it happened in the last um last game of the Storm Week. On a Sunday, I got injured. Did my rock and uh, did my Achilles in the warm up. Um, went back home, so I went back to Auckland. I was still signed with Auckland for the next two years, so I went back to Auckland. Never heard from, uh, ne- yeah, never heard from them anything. True. Um, so I went back home, did all my rehab. But I remember when I left um, Nelson, Leon said to me, "We'll bring you back." And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe it was just a word, like, you know. Mm. So I went home and then did all my rehab and stuff. And then um, my, I think it was my second two games back after from my Achilles. I played two club rugby um, games in Auckland. Goody rang me. Um, he rang me and said, oh, we're keen to have you back and we'll sign you. Yeah, we'll sign you for f- three years. Oh, true. Yeah. Decent. Yeah, we'll sign you for three years. I was like, yeah, well, I'm doing that. I'm 100% going to Nelson. I did exactly the same. Went up to the um, the office upstairs, said to them, um, I've decided to, you know, I'm going to go play for Tasman. Mm. Straight away, not happy, you know. But at least I went up and you yeah. know, told them I'm going to Tasman. So they end up releasing me from my contract. So yeah, moved to Nelson and then yeah, 2019 had a good season right from the start, um, first round, play well and then I think it was after the fourth or fifth round, had the Blues, um, the Blues was the first oh, one. Oh yeah. It was Leon. Uh, Leon um, tried to um, call me and said, uh, well, can, um, can to uh, sign you but he couldn't do anything, he can't really do anything because he was, I think he was in Fiji. Oh yeah. And I was like, yeah, Keen, Keen. The, um, the Hurricanes, uh, the Canes came. Sure. Second one came. Yeah. Um, they put it off on the uh, table. The first one, they put it off on the table. And then, but I wanted to come here. Sure. I wanna, Why'd you want to come here? What was that? Um, you know, it's everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everyone, everyone wanted to be in the Crusaders, you know? Yeah. Um, they have won, just won the final again. And most of the guys in Tasman, like in the team in yeah. Tasman, are all Crusaders. And like, who, who, like you know, the boys, like Dave and them were saying, like, man, the, everything the same. Mm. Um, you know, maps, uh, um, like the setup, all the same. Mm. In, um, in the Crusader, you're, you know, you're enjoying, you're fit and perfect. They they talked to me about coming to the Crusader even before Razor called me. Oh, true. <laughs> 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 then yeah, Ra- yeah Razor um yeah, Razor sent me a text and said, um, you uh, you came to talk. Showed away, I was like, Man, I th- I think I'm getting a contract from, t- <laughs> from the Crusaders. Yeah, he ended up calling me and he said, um I don't yeah, I still remember he he said oh, you came to um come to the Crusader next year. I was like hundred <laughs> percent I'm coming to the Crusaders <laughs> <laughs> I'm signing this contract straight away. Um, yeah, a couple of days after, they put a, um, put an offer on the table. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. But the hardest part is to have to, you know, um, let the two, uh, the two other team, mm. they have signed with Crusaders. Mm. But my, yeah, agent, my agent just, um, sent me through what to say to them. Yeah. So I just rang, yeah, rang them and told them they're, um, I'm going to sign here. Mm. Cool. And what's that for? Four titles later or five titles later for you? Four. 
Four titles. <laughs> yeah, four titles, man. What one's your favourite one? I'll say, I'll say my first one. Oh yeah. Uh, against the Highlanders, I was I came off the bench yeah. um, that year, but I reckon last week was probably the yeah yeah the highlight of my you know my time here at the Crusaders. Yeah, starting in the final, played the Chiefs every day, you know. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good memories, good memories, and yeah. obviously, you spoke about your dream of becoming an All Black, and now. Um, you obviously made yourself available for Tonga. You've played for Tonga now. How hard was that, and what made you um, make that decision? It wasn't the the Tonga coach. Um, he's been talking to me for you know since you won the golden boot, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, for like a couple of years, like oh maybe my first year in Super Rugby, yeah, uh, twenty twenty. He's been like you know asking me if I'm going to play for Tonga and. Uh, I just said to him like I wasn't. I didn't cut him off. Mm. I just said to him, um, my my dream is you know become an All Black, um, um, and just focus on playing good for Crusaders. Mm. And not until last last year, started last year, um, was I was coming back from injuries last year, and then he asked me again. He said, oh, we, um, we got a tour in July. Uh, you came to um, come and play?" And I was like. Let me uh, let me talk to my family and talk to my agent about it. And I thought about it. I thought about playing for Tonga for like a couple of weeks. And then I was like, man. First of all, like the loose four that the All Blacks have, they're all young. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all young. They're all you know the best, you know, best, best in New Zealand. Um, in my head, I was like, man, where can I fit in that team? You know. I'm not tall, I'm not big. Um, maybe a seven, uh, maybe I can, you know, fight fight for that start uh, for that seven spot mm. in the All Black. And I was like, man, if I stay in New Zealand for another couple of years and wait for those guys to leave, that's a waste of time. Knowing that the World Cup was, you know, mm. this year. Mm. So I came back from injuries. Um, Play, I think I played two games, and I said to um, the coach, I'm, "I'm, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come and play this year." Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's how I, ch- you mm. know, changed my All Black dream to play for Tonga. Mm. Um, I, st- I just didn't want to waste time waiting. Mm. Um, why not like go play for my country um, this year? And, you know, hopefully World Cup. Yeah. Um, yeah. And did it take the pressure off you once you'd made that call? Because obviously you've got this expectation in the back of your head to be an All Black, to follow the golden boot. Um, all the guys have won it and become that All Black. So you obviously had this expectation and pressure on yourself to do it when you'd finally decided you're going to play international for Tonga. Did you sort of uh, did that sort of take some pressure off you? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, kind of. You know, kind of. You know, take all the pressure on my shoulder, like to be an All Black. Mm. Um, well, you know, but even yeah, even now, like family and stuff, like man, they were still like you know, saying that oh, I should have just wait. And I was like, nah. <laughs> um, now I play for my country. Now I'm happy. You know, mm. um, I have won. You know, I've I have won Super Rugby title. I've won Mighty Team title. Now it's probably time for me to, you know, get back, get back from, um, get back to my country, you know, mm. go play for Tonga and hopefully help, you know, help them. Mm. Yeah, surely. And your plans going forward? Or you, um, where are you next year? Um, I don't mind saying it, but um, I signed with Moana for two years. Yeah. Um, and then signed with Tasman uh, for another two years. So sure, it's yeah. all start. All the, con- the my new contracts start um, next year. Mm. Um, Looking forward to that. Obviously, you're going to be a big part of the side up there, be a leader and influential player. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same as here. Mm. Uh, it's going to be tough. Um, but I'm most looking forward to like you know, take my what I've learned here, my experience. Here, 
here and take it up there to Auckland and help um help you know help them uh, the Moana team you know um help them get to you know where they want to you know go mm. the next couple of years so mate it's a, it's a great signing from from Moana to pick someone like you up like you say you'll give so much to that group um you're going to be a dominant force. You'll be <laughs> chop tackling everyone. Oh. Um, mate, it's the last thing they need is more <laughs> physicality in their side, and mate, yeah. you're going to bring it. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. You know, um, us Islanders, we love you know, love being physical up there, but we've got to be smart. You know, <laughs> how we do it. It's a, it's an 80 minute game. It's yeah. not. Um, it's not 40. You know. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm looking forward to help help them that way. Yeah, and I've learned. Yeah, I've learned so much here. Like yeah. you know, you got to, you can't be, you can't be physical, physical. You can't be tough for forty minutes. You got to do it for eighty minutes. Yeah, plenty of questions came in for you, um, especially from some of your teammates over the years. Um, a lot of them are around your nicknames. Actually, you've got a lot of nicknames, eh? Like um, heaps of different ones. So I'll get you to explain a few of them. Um, first one was John Hurricane. <laughs> uh, the yeah, the guy that actually <laughs> gave me that nickname was Shannon Fisher. Oh, was it? Um, it was over. I think we yeah we playing north and up north. Um, we went out for coffee uh, with the team yeah. that morning, and um, we were all sitting on the table. Um, and I can't remember who it was. I think it was um, Corny. Oh yeah, he asked me. Yeah, oh, the the girl came and asked for our order and say, "Oh, like, what do you want?" And I said, "Flat white," and I wrote John. And then my coffee came and um, Connor was like, "What's John?" And I said to him, "Um, um John and Tonga is like Johnny," <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, but what's um, what's Havili?" But Shannon was sitting right <laughs> next to me <laughs> on the table. Before I even, like, you know, explain Havili in English, Shannon said, the hurricanes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and that's how the, uh, yeah, that's how my, yeah, the John Hurricanes um, came about. And, yeah, ever since the um, the boys in Texas start calling me uh, John Hurricanes, John. even here, like, Scooter and them yeah. are like, <laughs> they call me John. <laughs> it's funny, but I don't, really, I don't, I don't care. Like, yeah. you know, I find it funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Okay, what about the nickname, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to say this, but um, <laughs> Bob is Ginny's um husband. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of time, and uh, Ginny's office. Um, yeah, my <laughs> nasa was the one that started calling me um. Bob, <laughs> that was his question. Yeah. Too, yeah. <laughs> okay, what a, what about this one? Um, excuse my tongan, but Fui Ulu. Oh man, who was that? <laughs> 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 what is that? Um, because I was growing up as a little kid back at home. Um, when I was growing up in Tonga, in my village. Um, man, uh, when I was young, man, I was like. I was skinny, my but my head was massive. Oh yeah. <laughs> um so Foy Ulu's big head. <laughs> and and <laughs> Tonga. Um Yeah, I was, I, when I was little I was like <laughs> the head even now like probably everything's kinda even now. But when I was growing up <laughs> yeah, yeah, the body was like small but the head was like um massive. <laughs> yeah. And that's how like yeah, pe- people even like now People back home, like, I'm playing, you know, rugby now, um, play on TV, but people, when, every time I go back home, people still call me that name. <laughs> 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 still call me that name. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Next one. Uh, tell us the story of when you celebrated on the final whistle, whistle when Grandma lost to Kent's. <laughs> what happened here? Oh, it was my last year at school. Um, we're playing St. Kent's at home. And I thought we won. <laughs> so when the ref um, brought the last whistle, so I'd jump up and, like, you know, <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> Didn't know. We, I, I thought we won, man. Uh, yeah, and then I find out after the game we didn't win the game. So it was embarrassing. 
It was against uh, who was captain the year for Saint Kitts. It was those uh, Papa Lee. Oh, true. It was, <laughs> it was on TV too. Oh no, you yeah. didn't kick the ball out or anything. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, that's funny. <laughs> Okay, next one. Um, Sione is not the biggest six, but he is a beast at tackling. Advice for smaller players. Um, like I said before, like you know, that was my point of difference. Mm. Um, not the tall, tallest. I'm, I'm not big, you know, for a loose forward. But that was uh, defense was my something that I pride myself. Um, as a loose forward, mm. and. Something that, yeah, I wanted to, you know, um, make people, you know, remember, people remember me as, mm -hmm. you know, this little guy, little loose forward that, you know, can tackle people, you know. Can you what? What is your mindset going into a tackle? Um, my, my, yeah, my, my mindset is just like, you know, smashing people. Mm. Um, doesn't matter if you're big, you know. Small. I always wanted to. Whoever I tackle, like make them feel like you know, yeah. feel my shoulder, uh, and then the next, yeah, the next time they'll run it, they won't run it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, that 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 my that that is my mindset, you know. Yeah. Every time I tackle people, I want to make sure they don't want to run it at me again. Mm. Mate, well, you even did that to me. I think it was the first time I'd held the pads for someone. You asked <laughs> me if I could <laughs> run the pad at you for a couple of times, and I reckon I got three whiplashes in a row, and yeah. I've never held the pad for someone again. Yeah. So, <laughs> mate, yeah. I felt that force even through a pad, but it, it is cool. Um, you might see it. Was your size something that people always said would hold you back? or Yeah, yeah the, my size, my height. Mm. It's something that people always like say. I sometimes like I don't. Sometimes I like read it on uh, social media. Oh, like, yeah. but the f yeah the thing is that they all say like I'm the I'm not tall. I'm not big, but like I'm. They will say that I'm tough. Mm. And I kind of like I like it when yeah. you know. It's like a compliment. It, yeah, eh? yeah compliment you're like tough. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Toughest ever. Okay, next one. Hardest player to tackle. I reckon Mumba. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Slippery, eh? Man. Mark Tilly, man, he's been on fire this year. Yeah, eh? he's been yeah, he's been good this year and uh, man, I reckon he's the hardest player mm. like to tackle. There's a couple of times like I've throw everything and they still manage to like <laughs> get off my shoulder. <laughs> uh, even the yeah. the game this year when I, I hurt him and then somehow he like, you know, got his way his legs away and he um, I ran the like. Yeah, that's I think right. he scored that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. When we played the Bruce, uh, um, played the Bruce this year. Yeah, and yeah, he's hard to tackle. Slippery, that guy. eh? Yeah, okay. Uh, next one. When is he coming back to Tonga? Um, I'll I'll go to Tonga on the fifth of July. Oh yeah. For um, um, you know, prepare for World Cup. But then I. Um, yeah, I'll go back again on on the um, for Christmas. I'm taking my partner and oh, cool. my you know my son yeah. um, and her parent, uh, mum and dad, to you know take them home and get yeah get my you know both family to meet each other. It's gonna be cool, yeah, eh? And yeah, right. How good? And another part of that question was, and how was your how was, how big is your head? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So that's everyone. <laughs> well, everyone, I've, everyone back there knows yeah, you're big. Every, everyone back home, <laughs> everyone back home know know me as a you know as a big head. <laughs> um, and I've got photo of me when I was a little man. Oh, you got to send it yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look back now, man. Like my head was like that big, and then uh, my body was like tiny. Um, I've yeah, that nickname kind of you know. Went away for ages, <laughs> not until like the, my people went back home, moved to New Zealand, <laughs> brought it up again, and they brought it up again. And I was like, man, not again. I don't want this <laughs> nickname again. <laughs> so, when's your son, Jay? Um, the 13th of July. Oh, I think so. Oh, soon. Sure. oh real soon. Any time um, from now on. Oh, wow. Hopefully not this week. No, How's this week. how big's his head look in the scans? Has he ah, got man. dad's head? My uh, <laughs> my partner's <laughs> like, man, I can't. 
I don't want to push, like, you know, push out their head <laughs> like the size of a head. <laughs> hopefully he's not big, though. Uh, hopefully he's got mum's head. Yeah, hopefully he's got <laughs> mum's head. And dad's toughness. <laughs> okay, what's the best piece of advice Razor has given you? Best advice that guys have given me. Um, he, always tell, he always said to me, like, Go out there and be the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray, Ray always he always gave me confidence every time, and um, yeah, he always said to me out before the games like, be the best tackler out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I reckon yeah, that's the best advice he's ever given me is like, be the best version of myself out there. Mm. Be the best tackler. That's <laughs> easy for you. Eh? You know you can nail that one. Yeah, let's go like that. Okay, um, next one. If you combine yellow and red, what colour do you get? <laughs> <laughs> Colourless. <laughs> Man, it was, who was that? It was Max A. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> What's that from? Oh, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, another one of your Tazzy mates. Biggest cheat in Monopoly deal. You're going to regret that brass and quote marks. Um, yeah, because... I used to live. Oh, I used to stay with Noah, Rush, um, Louis Jetman, yeah. and then Hugh. We used to play oh. um, Monopoly deal. Um, like you know, take the rubbish bin out to the, the, the road. Uh, you know, clean the house, like that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And man, I'm not. I don't. I do cheat. I reckon <laughs> Noah is the biggest cheat um, <laughs> in that game. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I always say to them, like, don't, you're going to regret this because, you know, <laughs> Monopoly deal, like, you know. Yeah, the deal pay, breaker. Yeah, deal breaker, the, you know, you have to pay money. And I always, like, say, you're going to regret this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, next one. Uh, what's his advice for buying a white ute, finance or cash? <laughs> yeah. Don't do finance. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Oh, couple, um... I think it was 2020. Um, I went into uh, w- when I saw this car dealership um, in St Albans, mm-hmm. and the guy was like, <laughs> the guy was like, um, I said to the guy, I'll buy the um, buy the U like in cash, and he's the guy's like, nah, you know, uh, we got um, we got someone's want to go in finance, we will get more money of um, that person than you buying in cash. Yeah. Then I didn't know that the same day. Jenny had um <laughs> had he, he talked to the, the like you know some of the guys about like you know finance and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. and Jenny told them the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah don't yeah don't buy a guy on finance. <laughs> so what happened? Did you just have to pay way extra? Nah, I ended up didn't buy the oh, uh, yeah. my ute from that um, car company. I went into the Toyota. Oh yeah, got yeah. my ute from oh, there. So. Smart. Mate. I don't have the ute now. Um, my partner told me to get rid of it and get a family car. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for kids? Yeah. Okay. Um, what else we got? What was his go-to meal at the hostel? I, I didn't really have any. <laughs> you didn't eat by the sounds of it. You worked. No, I did eat. No, I did eat. <clears throat> but I love every food, <laughs> man. Like, came home, came from Tonga, like. You know, yeah. That f- the food I had at hostel was like the best. Um, and plus, I was on year. F- I was in in the hostel for one year. Yeah. But those guys, they've been there from year like year nine. Hated. True. They didn't yeah. like the food there. But I'm grateful, man. They, yeah, yeah. I was grateful, man. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I love all the food at hostel. To be honest. Let's go. What's your favorite food that you eat? What's your? I reckon it was the breakfast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, in the morning, um, after you have breakfast, you have to make lunch. Oh, yeah. And I end up, you know, making a sandwich with the scram- scrambled eggs and, <laughs> and take it to school. <laughs> I just pretty much eat breakfast. <laughs> and for then lunch. Have, yeah, for Double lunch. breakfast. Double breakfast. Yeah, that's right on. Okay. Tell us about your... Mm, a pfui tattoo on his arm, though. What's that word? What um, tattoo have you got on your arm? I've got um, 
I've got my my school. Um, I say school local. Oh, logo. Uh, yeah, oh, local. Yeah, 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 on my arm. So I had it. I got it when I was like fourteen, fifteen. True. Yeah. Um, cool. Eh? It's yeah. It's it's like it's normal back home. Yeah. Like, to get um, because people uh, were so proud of their schools. So yeah. Yeah, I end up got my school. Have you got the Marco as well? Yeah, I've got the Marco. Yeah, yeah. the Marco yeah. tattoos too. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Crusader? Nah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two more questions. Uh, we'll, what was the hardest thing about the move from Tonga to New Zealand? The hardest? Um, living, leave everything behind, like family and... Mm. Um, were you able to contact, keep in touch with them? Yeah, uh, I was still, you know, talk to them on the phone. Yeah. But back then, um, I didn't didn't have Facebook. Yeah, I had a phone, but it, uh, one of those the old bricks, know, yeah, <laughs> the old phone. Um, yeah, yeah, it was it was tough. Yeah, I had to leave family back home and move into a country that the um, language is not my first language. Yeah. Um, had to learn everything. Yeah. Yeah. No regrets. Look at you now. <laughs> okay. Best piece of advice you have for a water lad listener? My bit of best advice for people out there like myself, um, don't be scared to tell your story. Mm-hmm. Um, I, when I first started playing rugby, I hate um, interview, I hate yeah, media and yeah. stuff, but I've learned since I moved into the Crusader to you know, enjoy, um, you know, being in front of the camera. Mm. And doesn't matter. English is not my first language, you know. Mm. Um, but like, don't be afraid to, um, you know, tell your story and hopefully you will inspire like young kids out there, or you know. Mm. Mate, it's super super <laughs> cool advice. It's obviously so grateful for you to come on here and share your story incredible story um, and I do think so many especially young Tongans or Islanders will um, get a lot of um, got a lot of good stuff out of that that might inspire them to make the move and chase their dreams like you did as a young kid with a big head growing up in Tonga <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> I think after this, um, this talk that that name will come back again eh? <laughs> and I don't want to hear that again lad <laughs> <laughs> no one will say it to your face no, though you're too scary nah. <laughs> people are still oh, the Tongans are, all the Tongans up in Auckland the people that like knew me from back home still yeah. call me that name <laughs> I don't care like I don't yeah. mind it like you know oh mate you've always had good banter and, um, <laughs> yeah good good person to have a joke with but it's been awesome getting to know over the last few years well, with Tazzy and the Crusaders and um, I've got so much respect for you um, I love what you do on the field and off it so um, awesome having you on and sitting down and having a conversation, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Mate, you're a lad. What a lad, what a lad, what a lad, what an absolute